What are we on? Day two? Should be day two. Alright. You meet up here with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Oh, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might like Plank. I knew it. Like him? Like, like, like? I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. I like, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a total sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Hmm. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king in a school he didn't even go to and was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. He was a convertible? He turned into a convertible. Got it. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend a University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, you're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did, you're great, why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great! You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? What? Hmm. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wondering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals, and that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. <sighs> I think you'd be very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it would be much use to anyone. <clears throat> Fibber. <clears throat> please, please, please! That would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. I'm not sharing it with her. It was I have Newt. I know it sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? I have Newt. Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. Huh. <gasps> It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. Hmm. Let's not be too approachable. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on a trail, sending it running free into the countryside. So he's Gandalf. Darla. What are you doing? You are so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. What a horseful butte you have. I mean, what a horseful butte you have. Dang it, that's what I just said. Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. Oh, b -Watch just gets really nervous around people that they like. That's not really covering, is it? And not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and were up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. Miriam? 
She gives you a wink and a smile and to say, Situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals. Ashley and Van Van are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Doc, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I dropped my headphones and everything. You're just bored, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Good girl. Put the headphones back on. Oh, I'm all sorts of messed up now. Oh. You good girl? I thought you were a good girl. There you go. Go up there. <clears throat> Like counterfeiting recipes bad, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, summoning a demon bad? You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder. <clears throat> but he sees you coming. <laughs> Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Uh. <coughs> Ooh. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? <clears throat> Act like you're not interested in them, but really try and get a closer look. Hmm. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you as you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. <clears throat> it's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? <laughs> you make the rules? Ugh. I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. <laughs> I don't know what his voice was. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. What's panache? And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. <laughs> okay, Jojo. You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. This book is a family heirloom, and its contents are sacred. <laughs> you notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing. <laughs> We're playing. <laughs> Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. <laughs> Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. <laughs> hey, watch you bucket of bolts. <laughs> you watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. <laughs> no, your mother was a stand mixer. <laughs> <laughs> Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <laughs> Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. <laughs> I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone is completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? <laughs> Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. <laughs> Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he is also a dog. What was my Sprinkles voice? Students, students, please take your seats. <laughs> I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and then my tiny legs are very, very tired. <laughs> but I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. <laughs> Rub his furry doggy belly. He loves it. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. 
Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the tr lesson. Truly, you do. <clears throat> Which is why in 1776, at the first signing of the Declaration of Independence, the chicken first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of fruit in front of you. Well, Biwa, naturally this appears to you to be a simple platter. Which item do you want to sample? If I sample the dog biscuit, will he be impressed? Let's do the pepper. A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way, so naturally you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe again. My friend. Ooh. This guy again? I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you have to do is... <coughs> Sorry, I think I still got some spice stuck in my throat. <laughs> it's fine, I'll work through... <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> the prophecy... <coughs> you must... You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Aw, man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last time it served, and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. <laughs> come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic amount... To play with. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook-off. <gasps> what? Alright. You're on. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. <laughs> I'm not the fool. You're the fool, fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, be what? <laughs> I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students. Please huddle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports in court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. <laughs> Just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready... I'M READY! <clears throat> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts you to victory. <laughs> Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. <laughs> I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Um, It always was 100... Seconds after you turn the heat on. So we'll do 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's wrong! Oh no! You're going to need seeds of this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices? There's 11! You don't know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're heading in the right direction. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Uh, gratitude! That's right! You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day, you mediate on his, meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Uh. 
Boom. No, be a good time. Where does it come from? The small town where dream. That's right. Small towns. Woohoo. That's right. This is your shot, and you're not going to miss it. You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Sizzling. That's wrong? What? You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, B-what. <laughs> he's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoonfuls of gravy would it take to fill... <laughs> what were you thinking? Get your mind back in the competition. Arr! You are stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. I know, right? <laughs> you know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Uh, gondola. What does that have to do with kayak from spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? Roof, roof. You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already been putting elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Ugh, yikes. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. You might not have any hands, but Bilot does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. <laughs> There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. They're all talking shit about you. Oh no, I'm gonna cut my hand off. Oh no, my hand! <laughs> Colonel Shander shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. The battle's over. <laughs> I can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't be very... <laughs> kind of be Watts injury. Hell yeah, I got hurt. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he looks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a variety of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I feel like I'm going a little bit of a lumpy space princess. I was going to ask Biwat to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand? Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Oh! <sighs> Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquet atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. Jelly? Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate sauce. Hmm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> <laughs> I'm a yell. <laughs> Stupid. As he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something in his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Ugh. You reach out with your apron to wipe the sauce off his glistening face. That was the right call. Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. <laughs> this goatee isn't just a fashion statement. It's also functional. I was saving that flavor for later. <laughs> Stupid. Game over. Really? Just because I wiped his mustache? You're kidding. Stupid. Oh no, I have to do all this again? Alright, we're gonna do this right. Alright, let's go. Uh, 100 degrees Celsius. There's 11 spices. Uh, gratitude. Gratitude. 
Small town where big dreams are born. Um, bubbling? Oh, is it silence? Okay, yeah, so this happens either way. We got the chocolate. Let's internalize. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn ash, and they fall off on your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. <laughs> I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. <coughs> Woo! Enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successfully motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Wow, what a multifaceted guy. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone of something better. I'm the very much better. It's honest. It's something that a young man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. <laughs> I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from last night, you prepare for the worst. Borco? It is I. I knew I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Aw, thanks, Borco. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, but that cookie's cooking by a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to like go to the school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever. But I was still a student. Until Sunday, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me. And I was forever transformed. A magic spell book? Precisely. I procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way, I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef. It shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be preventing the innocent from those who cheat them through sorcery and guile. I don't know what this voice is. If you hate me, no fear, I will be there. 
it sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Be what? Together, I am sure we can defeat them. <laughs> Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. They gon' fuck. A personal invite? You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Okay. Okay. I see you. Stepping inside of Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with. Trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy. Or something crispy. Both, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new reaction to him, or keep it a secret just for you? I should share. You decide that you're ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you... My original coleslaw. <gasps> the shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. <gasps> Magnificent! <laughs> Together, you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. <clears throat> you could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. That's fair. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. Uh... You gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I never learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack and the ghost of student is swept out with a breeze. Top on an item to discover more about the colonel. Chicken. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic. It's real. Taxidermy? Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The True State Bird of the Great State of Kentucky. Tap on an item to discover more. Is that whiskey? That's a candle. A scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69? No, it's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's... <clears throat> Tap on an item to discover more about the kernel. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. From the goatee and mustache combo he sports, you figure that this must be Colonel Sanders himself. That, or maybe it's the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Hm. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded. Am I right? <laughs> Tap on an item to discover more about the Colonel. I don't want to snoop on his bedroom. <gasps> you open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit long for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they mean? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks why you're wearing his jacket. Aww. <laughs> 
I don't usually loan those out, but I must say it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket. I'm gonna tell him the truth. <clears throat> you confess. I think I've developed feelings for you. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving the colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Oh. <gasps> colonel? Hmm. Yes? <laughs> I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. But I wanted to fuck him. Dream sequence. Ah! <gasps> Everyone looks so pretty. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is the day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. In some jurisdictions, blank isn't even legal. But if their SP is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. Mace? It's probably Mace. <clears throat> He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Oh. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? I kind of want to take him down a peg. It's good, but my mom made better. <laughs> Colonel Sanders' expression grows serious. Did your little jab land too hard? Colonel, I'm... I know what you're going to say. I need to be better if I'm going to leave my mark on this world. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. Son of a bitch, dude. Calm down. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confusion by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school, after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried about something that happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. That's good. We were all worried about Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date! What? She went on a date? I think I can believe that. <laughs> Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Wow. Of course I told him, you'd better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving? As if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date, too, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? <laughs> Nothing happened but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. <laughs> What's a swirl? It sounds delicious. <laughs> oh, it's great. I'll order you one up right away. I'll have my swirly with a Sprinkles, please. <laughs> Sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dip, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mm. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. 
There's that little horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Ooh. <laughs> you, you've got some nerve be what suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accidentally makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to a boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone on the side for the final day of school? Be one. How's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Uh -huh. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What's he doing complimenting her? Hmm. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? Ugh. It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say. It was bland. Excuse me, boy Baywalk. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. Uh-huh. Maybe you could tell me your, more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine arts of food and fine foods. See you inside, be what? Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the crowd to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spellbook you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, what's that book? It looks like bad news. <laughs> it's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a spell of books? Book of spells? Spell of books? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings, cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edge of the pages. Edges of the page. I could use that spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else? Like anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe a tie string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory-erasing spell sitting right in front of you, and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Why in the world would I do that? You take your friend's advice and pull the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on. But I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Um, Let's see what happens. Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you never come back here, Terrence! I will destroy your nerves! <laughs> Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder. Is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not turn your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he turns to a professional tone. Ahem, <clears throat> I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, B-Watt, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see? But before you go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. <laughs> you think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Blank are to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. <laughs> But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends Jeff and Joan. J and J forever. Watch us from a triangle in mirrored air as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. 
Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. <laughs> then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Aww. Aww. Plank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of his gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Beep. Bzz. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. <laughs> Clank burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep-fried footwear, I guess it looks okay? Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. Before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, you okay? Uh. Okay, I'm so mad I can smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to success city. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it, and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Popper Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for their first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay because you had a better exam and have an idea of how to spend the time before your exam. Oh, man. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. And a chance to beat the game pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil-er counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of recipe you've been working on. B. Watts' famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. B. Watt, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and pouring, picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. <clears throat> visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. <clears throat> You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when... The oven timer goes off behind you. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know, my nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You know, it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all-butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no, I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. Pull out, King. Wow. <gasps> That's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. Cam, it makes me want a pot pie. Come and give me a pot pie. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules! That is, except to cook whatever you've got! You step up for the cook-off for a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. 
Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are preparing wildly elaborate dishes, per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and silver slits of tweezers. She's definitely preparing to go big going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg warsh! <laughs> Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty-bitty pot of broth. Beth's friend, bastard bladder. <laughs> Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. <laughs> Shallow personality spatula. <laughs> Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. He speaks English? <laughs> It's the singularity, as was foretold. <gasps> we mustn't let it happen, or... That's not his voice. We mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. self dist Van Van quickly unplugs Slank and rolls him out of the back door of the arena. As you frantically compare, prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spellbook out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? I'm going to do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel C. Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. <laughs> I believe in you. Miriam notices too. Aww. I've always believed in you since we were little kids because I'm your best friend forever. <laughs> You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up in a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve, wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle. So I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the Spork Monster, notices that you've got the Grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscrossed some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? Ha! <laughs> you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country. You can feel Spork Monster riding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during scare testings and when I woke up. You toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind, I'll talk to you later. Good luck. <laughs> Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how many you could ever win. You summon extra power from deep down within yourself. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, be one. You are the chosen one. You avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful, because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooks in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear be what You may have suffered some setbacks, but it's all not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned it his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet, and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow the heart. What a guy. 
Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laced your eyes on. And besides, some unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting... If we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union. Time's up. With the time expired, and it's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, clank. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only be come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying. It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there now! <laughs> Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a, sal a wedge salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly your book material. Wait a second. Pranks? Pranks? Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature whir beep or another onomatopoeia, but there is none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged. I guess we'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. Oh, it's so tiny. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny Naruto Narutomaki I spy afloat in the Itsubitsubo? Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all myself. In just a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Now that it took much... It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. <clears throat> Thank you, B-Lot, for making me believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made... <laughs> uni over smooth egg custard in an axion urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, different colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Ruff, ruff. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Rrr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. <gasps> oh, his tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. <laughs> this qualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount Thimplethity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously, graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student! Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made... Orange Blossom Turkish Delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. Turkish Delight is not tasty. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food. At a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Bilat? I told you, it's a display piece. 
Actually, I must say it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And I did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. Huh? She does make a good point. <laughs> you semantics ass. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food, if the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You want no high on cuisine if it cooked yo! And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last time you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese... ...has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. For some somewhere in the room, a literal drumroll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything, in this kitchen, you give me this, this... thing... ...and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It is so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. I mean, I've had the KFC mac and cheese bowl. It's actually pretty good. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back into this magna... My... The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admire that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment. To get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts of grout or graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh. Amusing. And now that everyone is together... It's the Spork Monster! He's totally mellowed out! Everyone is Spork Monster! No more! From here on, I'd prefer that everyone refers to me by my new name! The Party Monster! The student tries to finish what he was uh, had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up in talking to Spork. Sorry. Party Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's going to do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking on the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma. So we hadn't mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, I get it now. And we get a new wing of the school. Not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. The music at the distance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank who arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this Earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? Hmm. I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I have just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out how you are, Clank. 
You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. It seems like it. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Weird. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Oh, uh, he's in a t-shirt? <laughs> Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not just enough to give them the bucket of chicken. This time it's a full meal. It's the whole thing. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken man by not reminding the people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting on the edge of the dance floor. Be what? What are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? On the top of my head, oh, I don't know. A spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It's truly my lucky day. <laughs> would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be uh, so glad to spend it with you, Be what How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. But we will help you run your restaurants. I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of the entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll in pastry school. Oh, my dear b -Watt, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. Well, that's a shitty ending. What? <laughs> That was such a bad ending! Wait, 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 I made the do coleslaw? I gave him mac and cheese? We did the mashed potato and gravy together? What is this? You're kidding me. We'll have to revisit that some other time. So unfortunate. Hmm.